you know, you're running this profitable company, you're making money every month, you're, uh, you're growing, you've got a nice vibrant business. What was the first overture like? What happened? Was it, was it U.S. Web? I think they were second. The first one was Yosemite Sam, right? Yes. So we had this guy with the little horseshoe ring and the diamonds on it. Um, and um, it was... Take my ring off. I think, he's, I think he spent... But, I mean, he definitely walked into the room and, uh, and, and lit it up. Uh, um, they were doing a roll-up. They were doing a roll-up. They were buying a bunch of companies. And we got kind of close because we were going to get a bunch of equity in the new company, and it was a decent amount of cash, and we were early and naive, and, and the corp dev guy called me aside about a week before this might close and said, listen, these guys, you don't want to do this deal. I said, thank you so much. <laughs> and so we walked from it. That was um, Osage, I think was the name Osage of that company. Osage was the company. So yeah, I get to do US Web. Yeah. So if anybody remembers US Web as a, as a roll-up company, uh, their CEO, um, after this point in time that we actually talked to him, uh, wrote a book, and we'll talk, maybe we can talk a little bit about his book, but um, they were also a roll-up of services companies, much like CKS and other web development shops in the late 90s, trying to pull together a, a, an agency that could do not only great design, but great web development, and, and uh, the value was going to be they were going to take on the Anderson Consultings of the world, et cetera. Um, so we went out to Silicon Valley to meet with them at their headquarters. Um, they were flying high like all those companies were back then, and um, they had a pretty regimented model. Here's what you get. Here's how it works. We've done 30 of these things, and you're just not 31 in the process. Yeah. Um, we said no to that, and the book came out, I think, only... I think the, the the topic came out maybe two weeks later afterwards. The book came out later, but he had a, an encounter with aliens. And so he had then, he was the CEO and CTO founder of the organization and made that public, that he had had a close experience with them and that he had now had gone to a different level than most of the rest of us in the world. And, uh, that, that was another near miss. The 800 page treats the owner's abduction was, uh, was definitely scary. Um, and so the, now, in the interview process, my last question to every candidate is suppose a UFO lands in your backyard, an alien gets out and says, Come with us, what would you do? And if anybody answers the question yes, they are not going to be hired. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, it's happened. So, so let me add, add to the story because you guys probably don't know this. So. Um, when I was at, at, it used to be called SoftBank Venture Capital, Mobius, one of my partners at, at Mobius, uh, Gary Rochelle, was on the U.S. web board. And in fact, the CEO who saw aliens is a guy named Joe Furmich, who I spoke to on the telephone the other day, um, because we were trying to hunt him down for something. And uh, uh, for sport, yeah. <laughs> I, I needed a connection. Nice. Yes. The, um, the, the, the most remarkable thing about SoftBank what, in this time period was, it was just the amount of crazy shit that was going on every day because we had so many investments and they were, you know, US Web at the peak was I think $8 billion market cap or something like this um, for a professional services firm that never made any money. And um, uh, you get these emails and I got this, you know, sort of Gary sent out this email and said you never believe what would happen and there was a, 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 a URL link and that wasn't that common to send URLs around at this point, you know, today it's no big deal, but then it was, you know, you get a URL, you click through no matter what, and it's a picture of uh, a photograph of uh, Joe in front of his house with news vans everywhere, and the headline in, like, the Mercury News is, public company CEO visited by aliens, <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you're kind of like, well, just another day, right? <laughs> he wasn't CEO for very long after that, if you remember correctly. <laughs> All right, so you passed on that. That was probably not, not dumb because several years later, US Web went bankrupt for the second time and was bought for like 30 million bucks. Uh, or w went bankrupt the first time and was bought for 60 million bucks by Divine, which was another roll up. And then that company went bankrupt, and I think US Web ultimately sort of vanished from the earth. I think that's right. So, all right, so you're having some of these encounters with roll up guys. What, what next? The, the, first, the first one failed, SH2. Um, so Did IXL ever come calling? We never talked to them. We, had, we know some folks that did, but yeah. we didn't. Um, Navidec in Denver, public company, 
decent market cap, company about our size, uh, and we got really close with these guys, and this was probably 5x value that we'd seen just a year ago. Um, 99, things were really hot still. Um, and um, I, I'm pr I, I'm, I don't know who approached us first, if, whether I was BEA or Navidec, but, but we had them both, and we, we played them off each other a little bit. And ultimately, the Navidec deal was uh, better on paper, but it was all stock. And I would have been the largest stockholder of a public company, and 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 uh, I, I say this nicely, um, I didn't have a lot of confidence in the future prospects of that <coughs> business, um, and so we took about two thirds of that in cash uh, from BEA, and uh, um, but but having having a, the the competitive bid hugely helped, um, and. Um, so you sold to BEA in 99? Yep. August. And how long did you stay at BEA? Uh, I had accrued a lot of vacation. So I took about six weeks off in the first year, year and a half, maybe five quarters. Um, and uh, that was that was really hard. I remember my daughter saying, you know, what, and it was really hard to leave too. I said, well, if you hate your job, why, why don't you leave? And I said, well, I really care about the people. And I don't want to let them down, and I want to help them through the transition. And, and I was able to play a role to sort of keep a bunch of the corporate politics away from them. And, and there was some really important work. I don't think I did it a year and a quarter, but I was part of it in the first quarter and the first two or three quarters in forming what was really our passion at Avitech, which was to build product. And I wanted to run that group, and I was rejected, which was turned out to be great for the group because somebody at corporate that knew how to get things done within BEA ended up running it. Uh, is now the CIO of eBay, and um, he he ran that group, and and then I tried to help the services team uh, continue to be successful, but uh, ultimately that wasn't a strategic vector of the company, so I punched out. So a year and a half. How long did you stay at BEA? Two. And what was your experience at BEA? Well, we, probably a worthy story is the negotiation process in the in the sale, and that was maybe a, a story on the value of partnership. And that was um, Tim's got a lot more experience in negotiating things, and I think takes a little bit more sane approach to those kinds of things, and makes sure that we always have a comparison, and that we want to try. We're going to we're going to try on all different kinds of hats. Worst case scenario hats, best case scenario hats, all these different flavors to make sure that we're doing the analysis right on on these things. Well, Navidec was another one of these roll up basically and I had the same issues with what was going on and BA was not. BA was completely towards product. I was completely sold on where they're at. I was completely sold on they were going to be actually one of these winners out of the whole job application space. I was done. As soon as they basically made inroads into where we're at, I, I I was like, when are we starting? You know, I, this was exactly where I wanted to be. And I remember the week before, I think it was maybe three days before we were about ready to close, and Tim came in and said, you know, I, I'm thinking about this scenario, and it was just like the worst case BEA scenario. And I, my heart dropped to the floor, and I was like, no, you're not going to, we're not going to choose. The, what, we, I, I, it was a total emotional reaction on my part. I was like, Holy cow. Now he was just trying out the deal to make sure that we were both sold and with which was the right deal. And he was testing me. He was just, you know. Now I was ready to walk. <laughs> he can, anyway, great, great analytical capability to, to take some of the emotion out when you need to when I was completely off the deep end. And so I ended up taking seven of our engineers and starting the, the product group that Tim was talking about, run by Mark Cargis, who's the CTO at eBay right now, one of our larger customers. Um, and we had just a great experience. Our first three releases were done in three months. We um, got to the end of the first year and found out that we underspent dramatically. Um, we should have grown a lot faster. There was way, we left a ton of money on the table. So we ended up growing to zero to $50 million run rate in 12 months uh, uh, at BEA with that product line. It was gangbusters. You could anything on top of a Java application server through a sales channel of 700 sales reps goes like gangbusters, and it went like gangbusters. Those guys were sitting next to the fax machine in '99, 2000, even into 2001, just watching it come off. 
Um, and it was great. It was, this was the portal product. This is the portal product sitting on top of BU's product. We grew out 125 engineers. Uh, we ended up with three development facilities. We closed one of those de two development facilities, folded them back into Boulder. We got onto 18 month release cycles with the big product. Everything just ground to a halt. We almost killed ourselves on a release. Steve Wilcox, one of our senior engineers, got just amazingly ill through part of that process. And, uh, it was some of the worst times of our life at the same time as it was some of the best times of our lives. Um, so I tried to, instead of roll up uh, what we were doing for product management across the country, I tried to do an entrepreneuring effort. The result of that was we bought a spinoff out of Microsoft CrossGain, which is a tools product, which was kind of where we were talking about. And um, that was my choice was entrepreneuring or out, and I chose out.